Welcome to another exciting edition of Marquee Backstage All Access. I am your host, Julie Milam. As always, we are going to dive deep into the lives and music of our guests, and we will share five full-length song performances, all of which were recorded at Thunder Sound Studios. Get ready for some picking and grinning with the country sounds of the morning suns. Listen as Austin and Levi share how they came to be the country duo they are today and how they hope to continue making music for others to enjoy as they hit the studios for more new music. Let's get started. Here is the Morning Suns with Gene Street. Cigarettes are hanging down my mouth. I'm going down. 4929 G Street ain't got a chance. Neither do I. Skip fall down, drunk you and me, girl. Step sky. If I had to go back, I would change a single thing. I'd still be wild. That was Jean Street by the Morning Suns. Next, we have a chat with vocalist and guitar player Austin Reynolds as he recalls the day he and Levi first met and how things have changed in the last year. They'll also talk about getting ready to record their first album, and you don't want to miss it. Right after that, we'll have Right Down the Line by the Morning Suns. Austin, tell us how the Morning Suns came to be. Well, it was, it was a year... A year or so ago, I think, and uh, I was sitting in chemistry class at Western Kentucky University, and uh, I was sitting in front row. I was punctual, showed up on time, had my notebook out. I was, you know, ready to learn, and uh, class had been going on for like 20 minutes. Like, I mean, we were in it, and uh, 
<laughs> the door just slung open and this, this feller walked in and had a beard on, had the, you know, a smug look on his face. I was like, well, this, this guy just does not care that he walked in late. <laughs> and it was, it was Levi. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he went up to the top. It was like an auditorium style. I was in the front and he was in the main back. It was a lot of people. And I think that everybody has been in a, a classroom setting where that one person answers all the questions and asks all the questions uh, or asks all the questions as well. And, um, uh, but well, Levi was that guy. He was at the top, and, he, and the professor was just like, you know, what's the answer to this? And he was just like, well, this hurts. How you bounce an equation? Just loud. And I was like, man, I've got to talk to this guy. So we had a lab later that day, and um, we started talking, and he had the same taste of music that I had. And he's like, you know, I'm, I'm a drummer looking to, you know, play gigs as well. And I was like, well, I need one because I, I was playing on my own at that time. So, I mean, the stars aligned, and here we are. All because of chemistry. All because of chemistry. Isn't that weird? We have really great musical chemistry and then met in chemistry classes. That's so. exactly right. That's exactly how yeah. it should be. I agree. So when you guys first got together to play music for the first time, yeah. did it feel right from the very yeah. beginning? It did. I was working on a song called Tumbleweed. It's going to be on our album that we're working on right now. And uh, that's the first song that we wrote together. And it was just like the pieces that were missing. He was just, he was feeling them. It was just, it's like some songwriters, whenever they write songs, and you get to write with someone, it's so rare that you actually have that magic, just, you know, spark like that right there. So anything I need, he puts forth and vice versa. So fast track a year to now. Yeah. Would you have believed you'd be here a year ago? Not in a, not in a million years. Not in a million years. I mean, we really just wanted to play bars and parties and, and hell in the living room was good enough for us. So to be where we're at right now, I'm... I'm, I'm very happy with that. So what do you think the highlight has been looking back on the past year plus since you guys got together? I think the highlight has been actually recording. So we have a couple of recordings that we're, we're doing right now and we're actually avidly working on an album. So that right there is going to be uh, our baby. So are your influences similar? Oh, very much so, yeah. Yeah. So who would you say inspired your creative abilities the most? That's a tough question. That really is. the. Uh, I mean, it's just so much. I mean, me and Levi both worship Leonard Skinner, of course. I mean, Ronnie Van Zant. I, I love him. I mean, I, it's just straight love. But uh, Leonard Skinner, you know, Almond Brothers, the band, love Lee Von Helm. I love Bob Dylan. Le Levi will argue with me, but I do love Bob Dylan. He's probably my biggest influence, I would say. And what would you say about Levi? Oh, Levi's Leonard Skinner, 100%. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> oh, no doubt. <laughs> Dead to rats. So besides walking in late to class, how would you describe Levi? Levi. <laughs> That's how I would describe Levi. He is uh, his own description. He is, he is his own entity. He is uh, very outgoing. Uh, he's never met a stranger in his life. Just one of the best people that you could ever come across. So would you guys say that you're the yin to each other's yang, or are you Absolutely. more similar? Absolutely. He is uh, very much more outgoing, more personal, and I'm more of the, the business type. Okay. Yeah. The greatest of both minds. Yeah, I, I think so. Well, we can't wait to yeah. explore more yeah. of the morning suns. Mm -hmm.
Stay connected with Austin and Levi by following them on social media for their latest music and tour dates at The Morning Suns. And stay connected with Marquee Backstage as well by following us on all social media platforms at Marquee Backstage. You don't want to miss the latest about our upcoming episodes, behind the scenes shenanigans, and lots of new music. Up next, we sit down with Cajon player Levi Ramage as he shares a little bit of everything. From his early days playing drums, family memories, and what he hopes his children can learn from his life experience. We'll follow that up with a wild interpretation of Creek Bed. So Levi, take me back to when you first started playing music. Um, I grew up with my dad. He played guitar and uh, he played, uh, he, we'd sit on the tailgate in the driveway at the house I grew up at and uh, he'd always pick and play like Marshall Tucker and stuff like that. And Me and my sister used to dance to it and that's some of my earliest memories of music growing up. So when did you pick up your first instrument? Well, I I remember going, I went to church a lot as a kid and uh, there was a drummer there at church. His name was uh, Rex Helm and I watched him play a lot and I remember I was probably eight years old. I took a pair of sticks and, and went up there and started trying to beat around. At the church? <laughs> yes. And I didn't, I hope nobody was looking. I don't, I don't remember if I got reprimanded or what, but I'm sure I did. So what was it about that instrument that spoke to you? I just, I felt rhythm, like from day one, I could just feel it and I felt it just flowing through me. And I just had to, I knew I just had to get up there and, and play, you know. So when did you start playing on your own? I was about 12 or 13. I started playing drum set. I had a dude at the church named Bradley Adams, and he started teaching me how to play drums. So then I joined band and went from there. How old were you then? Uh, about 13. Okay. So bringing all of your youthful talent to the Morning Suns, tell us how that has changed Levi. Uh, it's opened up doors that I never thought, like, uh, I mean, I got to Bowling Green, I didn't know anybody except for my aunts, and uh, I met Austin, and and he he was writing songs and and that I really got into, and uh, so I, I started just, you know, uh, playing drums to that and all that, so, yeah. So what is it about the cajon that speaks to you? It's just, it's simple. It's like, you know, no symbols, not a lot of stuff to lug around. And, and the convenience of it, I think, is really what, at this time, point in my life is what I enjoy about it. So, so when you and Austin first began playing together and writing together, did it feel natural to you? Oh, yeah, 100%. He, uh, yeah, we just clicked automatically on music, yeah. So what has this experience done for you as a person? It's, um, it's definitely made me a better person and it's opened up creative parts of my mind that I really didn't, I never explored. I guess I was kind of hesitant to delve into, but got into them and I, you know, we flourished from there, I guess. So what is something about Levi or about Austin or about the morning suns that you think people would never believe if you told them? Uh, that we will literally play a show anywhere in the United States and for really probably uh, no, any amount of money <laughs> and travel any distance. So yeah, we just love to play music, that's it. So what is your biggest accomplishment to date? I'd have to say, uh, uh, I guess, getting into college and and actually pursuing pursuing that education after the military. So, so what branch of the military were you? Uh, Navy, same as Austin, yeah. yeah but, we didn't get into that with Austin. No, but we didn't know each other in the military too, is a funny thing, so. So you're in the same branch of the military, got out about the same time, and had no idea who the other one was. Didn't meet each Both other. Both from Kentucky? Yes. Were you stationed in the same place? At one point we were within uh, driving distance at one point didn't know each other. It was meant to be. <laughs> I reckon so. <laughs> so when you guys are older and you look back on your own children, your own families, 
What do you hope they can learn from this experience in your life? Definitely to pursue what, what's in their hearts to pursue and do, do what they want to do. What do you think your parents, your sister would say about where you are in your life right now? They're definitely proud because, uh, uh, yeah, my mom always wanted me to go to college, so definitely proud of me that, that I'm doing what, you know, that, that whole thing. Are they surprised that the young man who would jump up and play drums in the church choir, uh, are they, do you think they're surprised that you've chosen this as a career path? Definitely surprised at this, the type of music that I'm playing. Oh, really? Yeah, I'd definitely say that. Yes, yeah, definitely not gospel music. So, Is that where they thought you'd go? No, I, I believe that they knew fully well I wouldn't go that way, but they would probably hope that I would have. And I, so, yeah. Does your family come out and watch you play? Yeah, yeah, they've, they've been out plenty of times to see me. And how is that for you? It's good. It's a little, little nerve-wracking because I'm. they're really good musicians. My sister is an excellent singer, and my dad is a great guitar player. And so it's, it's a little, I feel a lot of pressure, but, but I, I still, I think me and Austin do just fine, so. Absolutely you do. Do you jam or write with your family? No, not at all. Have you ever thought about it? Uh, n yes, I have, but it just wouldn't, I don't think it'd jive. You never know. So what are your hopes and dreams for you and Austin? In the morning suns? Well, I, I tell a lot of people this, but I think really if me and Austin could survive and eat and sleep somewhere just and just play music, we'd be tickled to death to just do that. So well, then I think that's where we should go next. Lord willing. Young and hills I'd run, fighting fires with a tank full of oxygen. I was wild and free back then, little did I know. Be the fines for all the wild old tide song. Drift back in my mind to them simple days before white lines and dollar signs. The only things I chase. I wanna go, so let me know, cause I'm going down. Oh, won't you take me down to the creek bed? That's where I wanna go. Let the memories flood through me till I can't take a breath for air no more. Sweet tempers of my youth, won't you baptize me with some 90 proof? Take me down to the creek bed. My time's through. The reflection of the water. Young boy stares, he was bound to leave, he just don't know where. Just killing time that he thought would never die. Day by day, skipping stones to the sweet by and by. Do you reckon that young boy would know me today? Or would he ever dream the crooked stream would lead so far away? I want to go, so let me know, cause I'm going down, so won't you take me down to the creek bed, that's where I want to go, let the memories flood through me till I can't take a breath of air no more. Sweet tempers of my youth, won't you baptize me with some 90 proof? Take me down to the creek bed when my time is through.
We want to give a huge shout out to our friends at Thunder Sound Studios for allowing us to film our show from their fully equipped analog and digital recording studio complex in Franklin, Kentucky. For more information about Thunder Sound, please visit thundersound.com or follow them on social media at Thunder Sound Studio. We have one final conversation with Austin and Levi today as we chat about this year's plans and what they hope their fans can take from their music to make their own lives richer. And speaking of inspiring others, the Morning Suns perform Heart in Mind only on Marquee Backstage All Access. So the magic that is the Morning Suns right here with us in real life, real time, where do we go from here? We are, um, we're going to go play out west. We're trying to get uh, out of state. We've been playing all over Kentucky and we're very Kentucky proud. So we love that. But we want to venture out and kind of reach out to people who might want to listen to us. So Throw that audience doing. for sure. Absolutely, yes. And we're, uh, we're working on an album right now. So um, that's going to be happening very soon. It's going to be on Spotify, all your streaming services. So that's the, the biggest thing that we're pushing for as a group right now and it's a it's a big hill to climb but i'm anxious yeah. so if we could blow your minds where do you think in your wildest dreams you could be 12 months from now where do you think that would be i think our both well i'd shoot for the stars like that <laughs> manchester music hall in lexington kentucky with or the sky pack in bowling green kentucky. yeah hey absolutely yeah. that would be or i mean just playing with artists that we look up to and uh, that we listen to ourselves, I think, would be fantastic. Yeah. So if we created the Morning Suns Festival, who would you want to play? Who would we want to play? Man, I mean, I'd definitely say Tyler Childers, 100%. I would say all the, the Kentucky musicians, Chris Nick Jamerson. Uh, maybe we've seen Grayson Jenkins the other day. Yeah, Grayson awesome. Jenkins, I'd so, love for him. To, yeah, yeah um, a good Kentucky festival. So when your phone rings or you check your email and there's something unexpected there from an artist or a show, or a festival. Like, what does that feel like to you guys when you see that people are, are asking for your music, they're seeking you out? It's insane. It, it is the most bizarre thing that I've ever seen. Like, if you play a show and people are, know your words and they're singing it and they're dancing to it, isn't it, Levi? It's just bizarre that people are interested in something that you love so much. It's just, it's, it's crazy. And I hope that anyone can actually feel that because it is just unique, to say the least. Well, you've both shared with me artists that you were inspired by that you grew up listening to. Mm -hmm. So the next generation grows up listening to and becomes inspired by the morning signs. That would be Lord willing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do you think of that when you're playing, when you're writing music, when you release new music? Do you think about inspiring a generation? No. Not, we, not we, we play what we would want to listen to. Yeah. If we were turning on the radio, we play yeah. what we would want to hear. So. And see, and songwriting is just... It's so so bizarre. It's uh, it's not even about like I would never just sit down and write about that brown chair. It's it's a feeling. It's just like I love it. So I mean, it absolutely is a, a feeling. It comes to you. You don't go. I don't go out searching for songs. I have to go through some stuff to actually write a song. It's personal. It's a story. So you never really worry. Like you never think like, well, I'm writing this song. Maybe that'll influence you know little Tommy down the street. I don't know. So well, one of the coolest things I think about being a recognized artist. Mm -hmm is that when you inspire people, they want to meet you. They want a face-to-face -face meet and greet, yeah. a backstage pass, if you will. But when you guys come into the, the part of your career where people are waiting to meet you backstage and you've got a young child, like you guys once were, influenced by music, and they really just want to shake your hand and take a picture and say, thank you for writing that song because that is my life. What do you think that's going to do for you guys? Hopefully not give us too big of a head. <laughs> I'm, ki I'm kidding. No, it wouldn't be. I would uh, I would love that. That's, I mean, that's everybody's dream whenever you pick up a guitar and you write. I mean, we're all that kid, so absolutely, I'd give back when you leave it. Yeah. yeah. What do you think your family would say about the music you're making now? I have a very supportive family. They they love anything I could do. I could do under underwater basket weaving, and they would, <laughs> they would wear a T-shirt and be proud. But my family's not musical at all. Like I said, they're just, they just love me. So polar opposites here as far as a musical background. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean polar. <laughs> My family rides in the car with no music. Just the thoughts in their head. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Totally different. And then you guys sat outside and played while well, you and your sister danced. Yeah. When yeah. your dad would play. When my dad played guitar, yeah. 
Yeah, polar opposites. And now my sister leads praise and worship at a church too. So. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody's musical. Well, just yeah, the three of us for sure. So. So the impact that you two leave on the world. I don't know. I think that uh, whenever we play music, we like to have as much fun as possible. So like whenever we're playing, it's not about, you know, money, making money. It's not about business. It's not about anything. But whenever me and Levi get on stage, like um, Greg Allman said at one time, he said that he had a sciatic nerve, like pinched in, in his back or whatever was going on with him. He said he could barely make it on stage. He said once he got on stage, everything goes away. And then when you come off stage, it comes back. And me and Levi are absolutely that same way. No matter what problems you have, when you walk out on stage, you have fun, and it's just, like I said earlier, it's just a unique feeling that I hope that anyone really gets to experience. Well, through you, we look forward to doing just that. I oh, am. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. What song? The other side, streets of gold, the lake of fire. Been wandering around, trying to figure out where I belong. Because I don't get in the best condition on Friday nights. When I get a sipping, but I still like to think. If you would like to watch the Morning Sun's televised episode, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Marquee Backstage for full episodes, video extras, and so much more. We've had a great time with you today, and we hope you've had a good time as well. Next week, tune in for a cast of characters you will never forget. Hurts to Laugh is taking over Marquee Backstage, and it is one you don't want to miss. Now for one last performance, here is the Morning Sun's with She Gone. I'm your host, Julie Milam, and I'll meet you here next week for more Marquee Backstage All Access.
shot of bourbon. I chased it with some wine. Cause my baby, she gone. Coming home again tonight. She told me to leave, so I sat right down. I kicked up my feet. She beat me to the door. So I pulled me some whiskey knee. Get stoned. 